Okay, so now that you have these being the same, we can cancel those two out. Okay, so we're left with negative 1 times y, which is negative y, over 2. Any other questions on this one? Yes. So if I want, I only can put negative in the on uh, terminator if I want. You get the same answer eventually. Which one did you put the negative? Because I'm in the confusion there. If I put both of the negatives, so where might this negative go? Because if I want, if I erase that, if I use only this negative, it's the same answer. So this negative is still here, but this negative you distributed to the 8 minus y. That's why it became y minus 8. So it's just so when you distribute it, it's gone? Oh, no. If you factor out a negative 1, you could have done that also. So if you do it this way, yeah, it would have also worked. I just worked. keep my negative. Yep. So if you did that and just, let's say for this step here, if you left it as y minus 8, times y over 2, excuse me, I can't over talk you, thank you. So if you just factor a negative 1 out of both of those, you can make that negative 1 times y minus 8. And then they would have canceled out that way. So you would have y over negative 2, which is the same answer. Does that make sense? Thanks. No, no problem. Okay. So you could have did this step either way. And there are probably a couple other ways you could have done it also, and it would have worked out. But as long as you follow all the math rules, it'll be the same. You'll get the same answer. All right. Any other questions on this one? All right. Leave that up for a few more seconds. So, let's say if we decide to simplify, and let's see if we have 6 over x minus 5 plus x over x minus 2, and all that's divided by 3 over x minus 6, and move that out a little bit, minus 2 over x minus 5. Okay, so we know our first step. We have to get those two fractions in the numerator and denominator and make them one nice neat one. And actually, whenever you have just a linear function in your numerator and denominator, it's easier because you already know that you just multiply each side by the other denominator. Okay. So we add and subtract. The numerator, clean that up a little bit. And denominator. Okay, so that means our 6 over x minus 5 plus x over x minus 2. We can go ahead and put parentheses around that since we're going to be multiplying. Okay, so we have an x minus 2 over here. So that means this side, move my arrow over. We're just going to multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2. And this side, we're going to multiply by x minus 5 all over x minus 5. So both denominators are x minus 2 times x minus 5, which means it's going to be something over x minus 2 
times x minus 5. So now we just go ahead and add our numerators. So you have 6 times x minus 2 plus x times x minus 5. Okay. Now we can go ahead and simplify it by distributing the 6 and the x. Move that over a little. So you have 6 times x. 6 times negative 2, which is negative 12, plus x times x, which is x squared, and x times negative 5 is negative 5x, all over our x minus 2, and x minus 5. Nope. Okay. Now we can go ahead and simplify this numerator by combining those two terms. Okay, so we have x squared, we'll put that right out the front. 6x minus 5x is 1x, or you can just put plus x. Minus 12, all over x minus 2, times x minus 5. Okay, so we have a trinomial, so you want to factor that one just in case something can cancel out. We don't know, but we'll factor it out just in case. Okay, so we have x squared plus x minus 12. Okay, so there's nothing in front of the x squared. So we know our b is equal to 1, and our c uh -oh, is negative 12. So we have to find two numbers that multiply to equal our c. And those same two numbers add to equal our b. Make this a little bit longer. Here we go. Okay, so we know 4 times 3 is 12. But this is negative 12, so one of those would have to be negative. Since our largest number is positive, that means it would be 4 times negative 3. And 4 plus negative 3. It would make both of those true. So that means this factors to become x plus 4 times x minus 3. Okay, so we have x plus 4 times x minus 3 all over x minus 2 times x minus 5. Okay, so nothing canceled here. But it doesn't mean it won't cancel out later. So we leave it factored. Okay, so we know this is our numerator. So now we just have to subtract our denominator. Okay, let me separate that a little bit. Okay, so for our denominator, we have 3 over x minus 6 minus 2 over x minus 5, and we'll go ahead and put parentheses around that since we're going to be multiplying. Okay, so just like before, we have an x minus 5 over here, so we have to multiply it over here. Yeah, always don't move the arrow a little too close. Okay, so we have x minus 5 over x minus 5. Same thing over here. We have an x minus 6 over here. So we multiply this side by x minus 6 over x minus 6. Okay, so that means we're going to have an answer. That's something over x minus 5 times x minus 6. Okay. So now we just subtract our numerator. Okay, so we have 3 times x minus 5. minus 2 times x minus 6. Okay, so this is just one term, so you don't have to worry about an additional set of parentheses. You can just distribute the negative 2. Okay, so we distribute a 3, and we distribute our negative 2. 3 times x would give us 3x. 3 times negative 5 is 
negative 15. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 6 will give us positive 12. All over x minus 5 times x minus 6. So just like before, we go ahead and combine our like terms and everything. So we can combine these two terms, and we can combine those two terms. Okay. So we have 3x minus 2x, which would just give us our x. And negative 15 plus 12 will give us negative 3, all over x minus 5 times x minus 6. Nothing cancels out, but we leave it factored because this is now our denominator. Okay, so we have a single fraction and a single fraction. And we'll continue on the next page since we're running out of space on this one. I'll leave that up for a few more seconds. So now we know that our original expression will become our numerator we have is x plus 4 times x minus 3 over x minus 2 times x minus 5 divided by our denominator. We know that's x minus 3 over x minus 5 times x minus 6. Okay, so we have our single fraction up here and our single fraction down there, which means we go to our second step. Where we go ahead and rewrite it. Okay, so that gives us x plus 4 times x minus 3 divided by x minus 2 times x minus 5 divided by x minus 3 over x minus 5 times x minus 6. Okay, So we're dividing two fractions, so we can go ahead and convert that to multiplication. So we write down our first fraction, which is x plus 4 times x minus 3 divided by x minus 2 times x minus 5. Our division changes to multiplication, and we flip the second one. So now we have x minus 5 times x minus 6 all over x minus 3. Okay. So now we can go ahead and start canceling out. We have an x minus 3 here and an x minus 3 there. So those two cancel out. We have an x minus 5 here and an x minus 5 there. Those two cancel out. And that appears to be everything that can cancel out. Don't have anything else. Okay, so we have x plus 4 times x minus 6. All over x minus 2. So that's your simplified final answer. All right, any questions on that one? Why can't you, um, like x minus 2 and x mm -hmm. minus 6, why can't you simplify the 2 and the 6? Why can't you change 
Oh, because you have to, you can only simplify factors. Oh. Yeah. So you can only simplify what's being multiplied. Okay. okay. Any other questions on this one? All right. I'll leave that up for a few seconds. So now we're going to go from expressions to solving rational equations. So again, these steps are strictly guidelines. If you want, if you have another method that works, by all means, you are free to use that one. Okay, so your first step, you want to factor all of your numerators and denominators. That's if you have to. You don't always have to. So factor all numerators and denominators. Again, that's if it's necessary. Okay. Now our second step, okay, you want to find the least common denominator to make sure that all your denominators are the same. Denominators are the same, and that's on both sides of the equal sign. Oh, bring that E up a little. Now, this step actually lets us get rid of all the denominators. If you do it correctly, this step allows us to eliminate all denominators. Third step is now you want to remove any grouping symbols, all parentheses or anything like that, and solve the equation. Any grouping symbols, for example, parentheses or brackets. and solve the equation. Move that up a little bit. Okay. Now your fourth step is to check it. You don't have to check the entire thing. You're just checking to make sure that none of your answers will cause you to have a zero in your denominator. Okay, so check your solutions to make sure none 
of your answers. will cause a denominator to equal zero. for a few more seconds. So, let's say for our first example, instead of simplifying, they want us to solve x over 6 plus 4x over 3 equals x over 18. So for this one, you don't really have to do the first step. You don't, there's nothing to really factor. You can make 18 equals 6 times 3, but that's about it. Okay, so you can really skip the first step because factoring is not necessary. Okay. Now for your second step, you want to match all of your denominators. Okay, so you have x over 6 plus x over 3, give it a little bit of space, is equal to x. And instead of 18, I'm just going to write it as 6 times 3. Okay, so now we match up our denominators. We have a 6 here and a 6 here, but we don't have a 6 here. So we multiply this by 6 over 6. So we have a 3 here and a 3 here, but we don't have a 3 here. So we multiply this one by 3 over 3. So we have 3 times 6, 3 times 6, and 3 times 6. So all of our denominators match up. Yep, but it would have to match that 18. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's the one that kind of lies out there. Okay, so you have 3 times x over 3 times 6, which is 18, plus 6 times x. X must be a 4x. Did I put, oh. Yep, 4x, thank you. So that would be 24x over 18. equals x over 18, since that denominator was already 18. We didn't have to do anything to it. Okay. So now, if you multiply each term by your least common denominator, which in this case is 18, That would give you 18 times 3x over 18 plus 18 times 24x over 18 equals 18 times x over 18. Oops, kind of separate that a little bit. Okay, so we multiply each term on both sides of the equal sign. So we'll see here that those two 18s cancel out. Those two K 
cancel out and those two cancel out. So really, whenever you have the same denominator on both sides of the equal sign, they'll all cancel out and you'll be left with just your numerator. So you have 3x plus 24x equals x. Which brings us to our third step, which is to solve it. Okay, so if we combine these two, we'll have 27x equals x. Okay. So if we subtract x from both sides, we have 26x equals 0. And divide both sides by 26, we have x equals 0. I'll put that underneath it. Okay. So now you have your fourth step, which means you just have to check it, which most of the time you can do it without really writing it down. Okay. So if we have our original problem, as x over 6 plus 4x over 3 equals x over 18. All we're checking to do is to make sure that none of those denominators will equal 0 if we plug in our answer. So if you plug in x equals 0, all the denominators are good. You don't have to worry about it. So this is actually a valid solution. Okay. So plugging in x equals 0 will not cause any denominators to equal 0. Any questions on this one? All right, I'll leave that up for a few seconds. Divided x instead of negative x when it crosses zero. If you divide it by x, that would leave you with one. 27 equals 1, which wouldn't be true. That was the only reason why you couldn't do that. So you really wouldn't solve for x. You're just kind of eliminating the x. So that's why you just subtract it to both sides. That's going to shut off in a minute.